In a paper titled The Role of Deliberate Practice in the Acquisition of Expert Performance, researchers estimated that it takes approximately 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to become an expert at something. If we want to estimate the average time that it would take to become an expert guitarist within 200 hours, how large should our sample of expert guitarists be? Assume the standard deviation is 850 hours and that we want a 95% confidence level. Okay, so what's this problem asking us to do? Let's reread this sentence here. We want to estimate the average time. So we want to estimate the mean, right? That it would take to become an expert guitarist within 200 hours. How large should our sample of experts be? So how large should our sample be is what they're saying, right? So how large should the sample be is a sample size question. So I know this is going to be a sample size formula that I need. The question is, is it going to be a sample size to estimate the mean or to estimate the proportion? Well, when I read this phrase, it says, if we want to estimate the average time. Average time indicates that we're dealing with the mean. So the formula is Z alpha divided by 2, sigma divided by the margin of error. And then finally, square your answer to get your solution. Let's copy down the numbers that were given to us in the problem that are helpful. In these problems, we always need to have a margin of error, we always need a standard deviation, and we always need a confidence level. That's what they always give us in these problems. I see the confidence level right away, 95% confidence. I'm going to go ahead and write that down, 95% confidence. I see the standard deviation is 850 hours. That's nice and explicit, right? 850 hours. Okay. The error is the thing I need next, the margin of error. There's a key phrase, so sometimes the problems say margin of error. That would be very helpful if it said that. But if it doesn't say that, then we have a key phrase. The key phrase here is within. That phrase within is used often to indicate the margin of error because we want to estimate the mean within that 200 hour margin of error. So we're going to use 200 here as our margin of error. So again, 200 hours. It's important that the units for these two items match up. They do, they're both in hours, so that's good. We don't have to worry about them any longer. All right, let's go ahead then and continue. If I were to try to fill in the formula now, I'd notice that I have E and I have sigma, but I'm missing Z alpha divided by two. I find that by using this confidence level. So remember, if we're looking for Z alpha divided by two, for us that's gonna be Z, what's alpha if the confidence level is 95? Alpha is 0.05, right? but then we'll divide that by two. So we're actually looking for then Z.025. So we have to go to our Z table or our T table, depending on which one we want to use here. And we're going to try to figure out what Z alpha divided by two is. Since the confidence level is one of the standard confidence levels of 95%, I think we're perfectly safe going to the T table to look it up. So we'll just look up this alpha divided by 2 value on the t table and we'll figure out what our z alpha divided by 2 value is for this problem. So let's go look up the 0 0.025 on the t table and because we're looking for a z value we'll go straight to the bottom and that will give us the critical z value we need. Let's go do that now. Okay so we're looking up 0 0.025 in one tail here for this problem so 0 0.025 in one tail and we'll go straight to the bottom. So we're going to need to scroll down a little bit here move our table up and we find the answer to be 1.96 1.96 okay so we found our critical z alpha value to be 1.96 1.96 so it's that number we're going to use in our z alpha position here so we'll have 1.96 times the standard deviation. The standard deviation it was given as 850 hours, right? We don't need to put the hours in because they'll just cancel out anyways with the margin of error at the bottom, which is also in hours, that's 200. And then we're gonna put that all in our calculator and see what it gives us. Okay, so let's take it out. 1.96 times 850 divided by 200. So notice I do all that in one step. I divide and then I'll square it afterwards. So we have 8.3, so n is equal to 8.33 actually squared. So let's square that up and see what we get. If I square 8.33, it gives me an answer of 69.3889. 69.3889. So is that our answer? Well, no, because we cannot use a decimal number for sample size, right? We can't survey a fraction of a person. so. We're going to need to take one extra person here. We'll round this up to 70. 
We do that because remember, this is the minimum sample size required, so we're never allowed to round down. We'll round up. That ensures that we have the quality that we specified here. We'll actually have a little more since we're a little higher than our minimum requirement. But either way, 70 guitar experts will have to be surveyed to determine um, basically the amount of time it would take to learn guitar at an expert level. So that's our sample size.